Now that we're dealing with rigid bodies, we need to revisit some of our dynamics equations. So for a particle, remember, we had the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the particle. Now we need to modify that because now that we have rigid bodies, they could be rotating. So to modify this equation, we now have the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration at the center of gravity. So this g means at the center of gravity of a body. But still, we can break this down into x and y components. So we have the sum of the forces in the x direction equals the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. And the sum of the forces in the y direction is then equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y direction at the center of gravity for both of these. Make sure you're adding the g to both of those. And now, because we're dealing with rigid bodies, we'll add one more equation. So for, remember from statics, we use the sum of the moments is equal to zero. But now let's take the case where things are rotating. Now we have the sum of the moments about point G, the center of gravity. So if we have a body and it has a center of gravity G, we take the moments about that point and that must be equal to the mass moment of inertia about the center of gravity times the angular acceleration. Now, if a body is purely translating and not rotating, so for no rotation about the center of gravity, we have the sum of the moments about the center of gravity equals zero. But we will encounter problems in this class where we need to use this formula. Now I'm going to go over one last equation, which may be the most conceptually difficult to grasp. So we'll have the sum of the moments around any point, I'm just going to say that some arbitrary point P, is equal to, now in statics we would set this equal to zero, but it wasn't, wasn't rotating. This, now we have movement, dynamics. This is equal to the sum of the moments in the kinetic diagram around point P. So I drew this kind of script M to indicate that it is the kinetic moments around point B. So what does this actually mean? We're going to go through a detailed example here in a second, but I just want to briefly go over it here. So let's bring up a scenario here, and we're going to set these two equal to each other. The left-hand side will be the sum of the moments, which you're familiar with, and the right-hand side will be the sum of the moments in the kinetic diagram. And I think we'll say that we have weight going downward here, right in the center of the car, and we'll have normal force going up, and we can call this the normal force at A, and we can call this the normal force at B. And let's say this car is rear wheel drive. So that means the tire is rotating this way, which means the frictional force FB will be here. The front wheel is not driven here. It just rolls. So there's no frictional force on the front wheel uh, needed. Okay, so there is our free body diagram. And let's bring up the dimensions now. And let's take the moments. So if we take the sum the moments around A, we would get NB acting a distance of D2 away minus W acting a distance of D1 away. This one's negative because it's clockwise here. And we would set that equal then to the right-hand side of this equation. Now, what is the kinetic diagram? In the kinetic diagram, we just show the acceleration. And then we're going to have an acceleration at the center of gravity to the left. And we'll label this AG. And now we take the sum of the moments in the kinetic diagram around the same point A here. And what we have is the mass times AG, right? This 
these two quantities multiplied together are a force, and then we multiply it by a distance, this perpendicular distance h1. Now setting these two equal, if we're given these equations, we could either figure out the acceleration uh, in this equation or figure out one of these other terms depending on what the question gives us.